I am making this video today to bring you some very sad news, as I am here to inform you that as of last week, I lost my litter of two from the Storm and Mr. Blanco breeding that went down in March. There are several reasons why I'm sharing this with you that are extremely important and tie into a few of my previous videos, as these lessons learned can save many of you from having some of the same issues that I've had since breeding French Bulldogs. So please stick with me until the end of this video, and don't forget to like and subscribe for more content related to breeding dogs, and more specifically about French Bulldogs. What's up guys? I'm Aaron with Laurent Frenchies, and I wanted to share with you the sad news that the two puppies that were scheduled to be delivered on Thursday, May 16th, passed away last week. Although this is a very sad day for me and my household, I wanted to take the time to make this video to confirm and tie together a few things for my audience, which may or may not be urban legends in the breeding business, and more specifically with French Bulldogs. The first is confirming that an ultrasound can in fact be accurate when it comes to counting puppies. Although I was hoping for more puppies, the vet did give me an accurate count of how many puppies she was carrying when I got an ultrasound to confirm pregnancy at 36 days pregnant. You can find this video here. I do believe there are instances when an ultrasound can be incredibly inaccurate when it comes to actually counting the number of puppies that a mother is carrying. But this is most likely pertaining to situations where the mom is carrying more than three puppies as they can hide from certain angles of the ultrasound depending on the situation. Although the only way to get an accurate count on puppies that is more fail safe is getting an x-ray around day 55 of pregnancy, this is just a waste of money, time and resources if you plan on getting a c-section. This would be more fitting in situations where you are planning on a natural birth, which I absolutely don't suggest and I'll explain why. I previously made a video that you can find here on why you should always plan on getting a c-section when it comes to planning the pregnancy of french bulldogs i'm not going to get into every detail of that video here but one of the important things to take away from this is the extreme risk you are taking on both the puppies and the mother's life by allowing your french bulldog to have puppies naturally this current situation is a case where i planned and scheduled the c-section for 63 days after the second ai with the vet which is a good practice to have but I missed a critical step in this process, which I will discuss a little later in this video. And also, I will change my process of how I count pregnancy days going forward because of the hard lesson I learned from Storm's pregnancy. What ended up happening is she went into labor overnight around 2.30 a.m. on Tuesday, which was actually 63 days from the first AI and 61 days from the second AI. Things happened so fast that I had no chance at reacting and getting her to an emergency vet hospital as she was already pushing out the first puppy by 2.37 a.m. Things started out great as I was doubting my previous stance of always planning a C-section with French Bulldogs. Unfortunately, she ran into trouble when it came to passing the shoulders and head of both puppies, and by the time she got them out with our help and ate the placenta, the CPR didn't allow the puppies to take their first actual breaths of air. Within 30 minutes of waking up to her in labor, both puppies had passed away. So where did I go wrong? I knew I needed a C-section no matter what anecdotal evidence from others suggested, and I had it all planned out and scheduled with the money set aside. Well, here's the critical step that some of you may already know that I wanted to share with you all so you don't make the same fatal mistake I made. I would suggest that you don't hard schedule a C-section with your vet until you get a reverse progesterone test with the pregnant mother on day 60 to 61 of the mother's pregnancy from the day of the first AI. I wouldn't wait a single day later, even if you see videos of people telling you to reference the second AI and count out days from there. The worst thing that can happen is you have to wait a day or two to get a second reverse progesterone test so that your vet can drill down a more accurate date for the C-section. The entire thing goes back to having the right process around the initial breeding, and if you do the initial progesterone test before the breeding and breed in the proper window, which I will talk about in this video here, then in almost all cases your female will take on the first AI. The second AI, and sometimes the third, is really just insurance in some cases that are done this way because of lower sperm count with the stud you are using, and because breeders want to do everything in their power to ensure their female actually takes. 
once you get a reverse progesterone test during your female's 60th or 61st day of pregnancy from the first AI, then your vet will advise you on the exact day that they can do the C-section based on the progesterone readings. Although rare, there are cases where your female could be ready that day and you can move forward with your C-section then. In cases where they aren't, the vet will either ask you to come back the next day or the day after for another reverse progesterone test or give the advice on monitoring your dog for signals going into labor, which includes heavy breathing and panting, nesting behavior, and an overall uneasiness of your dog. You should also monitor the temperature of your female hourly and look for signals of their temperature dropping. Normal temperatures for female dogs is between 100 and 102.5 degrees. Her temperature will slowly drop as she gets closer to going into labor, and as soon as her temperature drops below 99 degrees, you need to get her to the vet to get the C-section done as she will surely go into labor in the next few hours. These should be in your non-negotiables and skipping these steps is taking the risk of losing puppies and potentially the mother as well, so please take this one seriously. In this community, I want us all to learn together in the name of continuing to improve this beautiful breed. Please allow my tragedy to be a lesson for anyone breeding dogs so that you don't have to make the same critical mistakes I made that costed me my beautiful litter of two fluffy babies. If this setback can prevent it happening to any of you all, then mission accomplished. Please don't forget to like this video and subscribe to my page as I continue to bring you information, tips about French Bulldogs and breeding. Thanks for watching.